Welcome to English Podcast. Hello, my friends. In this episode, we're going to discuss some realistic ways to improve your English speaking skills, even if you're short on time. If you're looking for practical tips and tricks to help you on your journey, then you've come to the right place. I'll ensure you that after watching the full video, you will learn a lot of things. Let's start the conversation. Hi, Robin. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm fine too. Hey, I wanted to share some tips with you about English speaking. Are you interested? Sure, I'm always eager to learn new things. What are the tips? Well, the first tip is to narrate your everyday life in English. This is a very effective technique to improve your speaking skills. How can I do that? What do you mean by narrating? I mean, you can talk to yourself or to someone else about what you are doing, what you see, what you feel, and what you think. For example, you can ask yourself questions like What am I doing? What are those people doing? What do I see around me? What do I want to do next? And then you can answer them in English. Sounds good. I'll try that for sure. Do you do that too? Yes, I do. And trust me, if you practice regularly, you will notice a big improvement in your speaking skills. You will become more fluent, confident, and expressive. Should I speak loudly or softly? Well, that depends on the situation. If you are alone or with someone who doesn't mind, you can speak loudly. But if you are in a public place or with someone who might be annoyed, you can speak softly or just think in English. The important thing is to use English as much as you can. I see. Thank you for the tip, Ronika. What is the second tip? The second tip is to improve your pronunciation. You should pay attention to how native speakers or fluent speakers of English pronounce words and sentences. You should also practice repeating what you hear and correcting your mistakes. How can I do that? Do you have any examples? Sure, I have some examples. Suppose you listen to a sentence like, What a beautiful day. You can repeat it after the speaker and try to imitate their accent, tone, and rhythm. You can also record yourself and compare your pronunciation with the original. You can do this with any sentence or phrase that you hear or read. For example, you can say, The weather is beautiful, the sky is blue, the birds are singing, and so on. I see. That sounds like a good way to practice. Thank you for the tip, Ronika. Do you have any more tips? Yes, I have two more tips. Do you want to hear them? Yes, please. I'm curious to know more. The third tip is to expand your vocabulary. You should learn new words and phrases every day. You can use a dictionary or an app to help you with that. You can also read books, articles, blogs, or anything that interests you in English. You can write down the words that you don't know and look them up later. You can also make sentences with them to practice using them in context. That sounds like a good idea. I do read some English text sometimes, but I don't always understand everything. I should try to look up the words that I don't know and learn their meanings and usage. Do you have any recommendations for what to read? Well, that depends on your level and your interests. You can start with something simple and easy, like children's books, comics, or magazines. You can also read something that you are familiar with in your own language, like a translated novel or a movie script. You can also read something that relates to your hobbies, your studies, or your work. For example, if you like sports, you can read about your favorite teams or players. If you are studying science, you can read about the latest discoveries or inventions. If you work in business, you can read about the market trends or the best practices. 
The key is to find something that you enjoy and that motivates you to learn more. I see. That makes sense. I think I will try to read more in English and learn new words and phrases. Thank you for the tip, Ronika. The fourth and final tip is to practice speaking with native speakers or fluent speakers of English. You can join a language exchange program, a conversation club, or an online community where you can meet and talk to people who speak English. You can also find a tutor, a mentor, or a friend who can help you improve your speaking skills. You can ask them to correct your mistakes, give you feedback, and teach you new expressions. You can also learn from their accent, their tone, their gestures, and their culture. You can also have fun and make new friends while learning English. That sounds like a great tip. I think speaking with real people can help me overcome my fear and nervousness of speaking English. It can also help me improve my confidence and fluency. Where can I find native speakers or fluent speakers of English to talk to? There are many ways to find them. You can search online for language exchange apps or platforms where you can sign up and find a partner who speaks English and wants to learn your language. You can also look for local or online groups, clubs or events where you can meet and chat with people who share your interests and speak English. I see. That sounds like there are many options to choose from. I think I will try to find someone who can speak with me in English and help me practice. Thank you for the tip, Ronica. And thank you for all the tips that you gave me today. You are very kind and helpful. You're very welcome, Robin. It was my pleasure to share these tips with you. I hope you find them useful and apply them to your English learning. I'm sure you will improve your speaking skills if you practice regularly and consistently. I wish you all the best in your English journey. Thank you so much, Ronica. You are a great friend and a great teacher. I appreciate your support and encouragement. I will keep in touch with you and let you know about my progress. Have a wonderful day. You too, Robin. Bye for now. Don't forget to practice new words. We will learn new words from this conversation. Annoyed. Imitate. Expand. Nervousness. Consistently. Gestures. She gave me an annoyed look. Can you imitate his accent? Take a deep breath and expand your chest. I think the team played consistently this season. His facial expressions and hand gestures leave little doubt as to what he is thinking. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hello everyone. In this episode, we will be focusing on English conversation. Listening to English conversation is an essential part of improving your English language skills. It can help you improve your listening, speaking, and comprehension skills. Our topic is a true friend. Hey, Ronica, why are you looking worried? I'm not worried, Robin. Just thinking about friendships, you know? How some people come into our lives and become more than just friends. Oh, really? What got you thinking about that all of a sudden? Is there something bothering you? Not exactly, Robin. It's just that sometimes life throws situations at us. And during those moments, we need someone who truly understands us. Someone who gets us even better than we get ourselves. You're absolutely right. Having a true best friend is like winning the lottery. They're rare, but when you find one, you're incredibly lucky. Exactly. You know, Robin, I have a lot of friends, both offline and online, but when I'm feeling down, it's like nobody really gets it. It's as if I'm speaking a different language, and they're just nodding along without truly understanding. I totally get your point. Yes, and a true friend will always show up when you need them the most. They will make time for you, support you, and stand by you, 
no matter what. Absolutely. A true friend is a priceless treasure that can bring joy, comfort and strength to your life. Let's both try to be good friends to each other and others around us. You know, Ronika, I've had my fair share of friends too. Some have come and gone, but the true ones, the ones who stick around, they're like anchors. They keep you grounded even when life's storms rage. Absolutely. A true friend isn't just there for the good times. They're there when life gets messy, when you're stumbling through your darkest days. They don't judge. They just hold your hand and say, we'll get through this together. And it's not about how long you've known each other. Sometimes you meet someone and it's an instant connection, a feeling that says, hey, you're my people. Those are the friendships that last a lifetime. So true. It's not about the number of years. It's about the depth of understanding. It's about knowing that even if you haven't spoken in weeks when you do, it's like no time has passed at all. You know, Ronika, I consider you one of those rare finds. The kind of friend who gets it without me having to explain. And that's a treasure worth holding on to. Robin, you're my anchor too. Thanks for being there. Even when I don't have the words to express what I'm feeling. Any time, Ronica. That's what friends are for. To be there, to listen, and to understand even when the world doesn't. Hi, Robin. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm fine too. Hey, I wanted to ask you something. Do you live in a nuclear family or a joint family? I live in a nuclear family. It's just me, my parents, and my younger sister. Why do you ask? Well, I live in a joint family. We have my grandparents, my uncle, my aunt, and my cousins living with us. I was wondering, what are the advantages and disadvantages of living in different types of families? That's an interesting question. I think there are pros and cons to both. What do you like about living in a joint family? I like that I always have someone to talk to and play with. I also learn a lot from my elders. They teach me about our culture, traditions and values. I feel more connected to my roots and my community. I also get to share my joys and sorrows with them. They support me and guide me whenever I need help. That sounds nice. I can see why you enjoy living in a joint family. What are some of the challenges that you face? Well, sometimes it can get too crowded and noisy. I don't have much privacy or personal space. I also have to adjust to the different opinions and preferences of everyone. Sometimes there are conflicts and arguments among the family members. I also have to follow a lot of rules and expectations. I don't have much freedom or independence to make my own choices. I understand. I think living in a nuclear family has its own benefits and drawbacks. What do you think are the advantages of living in a nuclear family? I think living in a nuclear family gives you more peace and quiet. You also have more privacy and personal space. You can express yourself more freely and pursue your own interests and hobbies. You also have more control over your own life and decisions. You can be more flexible and adaptable to changing times and situations. That's true. I do appreciate those aspects of living in a nuclear family. What are some of the difficulties that you face? I think living in a nuclear family can make you feel lonely and isolated sometimes. You don't have many people to interact with or rely on. You also miss out on the wisdom and experience of your elders. You may not learn much about your heritage and identity. You also have to deal with your problems and challenges by yourself. You may not get enough support or guidance from your family. I see. I guess there is no perfect type of family. Both have their own strengths and weaknesses. It depends on what suits you and your needs best. Yeah, I agree. 
I think the most important thing is to respect and love your family, no matter what type it is. Family is family, after all. That's right. Family is family. Thank you for having this conversation with me. I learned a lot from you. Thank you too, Ronika. I enjoyed talking to you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. We are going to learn some new words from these conversation. Learning new words will help you to speak more good. Storms, stick, heritage, drawbacks, conflicts. He walks with a stick. God's love remains your heritage. Conference time by the seaside still has immense drawbacks. It brought her into conflict with her neighbors. He walks with a stick. God's love remains your heritage. Conference time by the seaside still has immense drawbacks. It brought her into conflict with her neighbors. He walks with a stick. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hello, everyone. In this English episode, we will be focusing on English conversation. Listening to English conversation is an essential part of improving your English language skills. It can help you improve your listening, speaking, and comprehension skills. Our topic is the importance of English speaking skills in school education. Hey, Robin, how's your English practice going? It's going well. But you know, I wish I could improve my English speaking skills at school. If only we had more opportunities to practice there. Absolutely right. I feel the same way. If we could practice English from an early age, we'd become fluent much faster. Hmm, true. So, Ronica, how do you think we can solve this problem? Well, there are several ways to address this issue. But here's the sad part. In many schools, even the teachers struggle with English. How can they effectively help students? You're right. I've heard stories about teachers who can't speak English fluently themselves. Absolutely. The first step to improving this situation is to train the teachers themselves. If they can't speak well, how can they effectively guide students? Makes sense. But what's the second solution you mentioned? Well, let's call it the English environment approach. Imagine if teachers spent a portion of their class time speaking only in English. For instance, they could dedicate at least five minutes of each session to conversing exclusively in English with the students. Interesting idea. Do you think it'll really work? I'm confident it will. Consistent exposure to English during class time will help students become more comfortable with the language. Plus, it encourages teachers to improve their own English skills too. Wow, that's impressive. Now tell me, how are your teachers in school? Did they ever speak with you in English? Certainly. My teachers were quite proficient in English speaking, but I was too shy to engage with them. Sometimes the teacher would converse with me in English, but I'd get nervous every time. It's funny. I used to dislike English back then. Ha ha ha. Seriously? I can't believe it. Look at you now. You're so good at English. Thank you. I had to practice a lot. And I'm still learning, you know. Why did you hate English initially? Well, one day my father and I were at the market and we bumped into one of my teachers, a friend of my father's. He asked me a question in English and I couldn't understand it. I felt so embarrassed in front of my father. That incident made me dislike English, but later I realized I was wrong. What an amazing story. So, what did you do afterward? 
I decided to change my perspective. I started loving the English language. I learned new words and practiced speaking. I even read English books aloud to improve my pronunciation. Learning new words is like collecting ingredients for a recipe. Just as you need the right ingredients to cook a delicious meal, you need a rich vocabulary to express yourself effectively in English. But it doesn't stop there. Knowing the words is one thing. Knowing how to use them in sentences and conversations is equally important. I understand, Ronica. It's not just about having the ingredients. It's about knowing how to blend them together to create something meaningful. Similarly, mastering English involves not only learning words, but also understanding their context and using them appropriately. Absolutely. I vividly recall my high school days. Our teachers would give us vocabulary lists to memorize from the textbook. However, the catch was that we rarely used those words in actual sentences or conversations. As a result, I struggled to retain them in my memory. You're right. We never practiced using those words in context. It's no wonder they didn't stick with us. The key is to apply new vocabulary in real life situations to reinforce our understanding and retention. You're absolutely right. It's frustrating how teachers often focus solely on exam scores rather than practical language skills. Even though we've been learning English since our school days, many of us still struggle to speak it fluently. Ha 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 ha, yes. It's funny, but painfully true. We're all in the same boat, trying to navigate the English language. Let me share an incident. One day, a teacher asked someone to speak in English in front of the entire class. Nobody volunteered. But eventually, one brave girl stepped forward and impressed the teacher. The catch? She had memorized her lines beforehand. Ah, memorization isn't the best approach. It's much better to express ourselves spontaneously. Exactly. Students often treat English like it's rocket science, fearing every word they utter. But really, it's about practice and confidence. So true, Ronika. We need to break free from that fear and embrace the language. Let's keep practicing. If you have watched the video till now, it means that you are truly committed to improving your English. And the good news is that your efforts are paying off as you are making progress towards your goal. Keep up the great work. Our aim is to help you enhance your English skills to achieve this goal, we recommend practicing the new words that were used in this conversation. We kindly request that you not skip the video, as it is crucial to learning new words regularly. Consistent practice is essential for improving your vocabulary and overall language proficiency. Let's work together to improve your English. Our sentence we need to break free from that fear and embrace the language. Certainly. In simple terms, when we say embrace, we mean to welcome, accept, and adopt something willingly. So the phrase break free from that fear and embrace the language suggests overcoming any fear related to language and being open to accepting and using it with a positive and welcoming attitude. It's much better to express ourselves spontaneously. Spontaneously means doing something in a natural and unplanned way, without much thought or preparation. It happens on the spur of the moment, without deliberate intention or premeditation. So if you do something spontaneously, you're doing it impulsively and without a lot of advance planning. It's no wonder they didn't stick with us. Wonder is used to express surprise or amazement. When the speaker says it's no wonder they didn't stick with us, they are suggesting that it's not surprising that those words didn't stay in their memory or become familiar. 
The use of wonder implies that there is a logical reason or explanation for the lack of retention or practice with those words. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.